All right, so I got a pretty uh, interesting project for today. Basically making a tool that I need in order to do the project that I need to cut and finish out later today. It's a tool that I've been looking at for a while and kicking back and forth whether I should just make my own or bite the bullet and order the, the tool. Uh, without further ado, Swag Off-Roads uh, Finger Heavy Duty Press Brake. Uh, again, something I've been wanting to to get for a while. Now, there are plenty of videos on YouTube, Facebook, whatever, about putting one of these together. This is a video on how to mod it for even better uh, output, better brakes, more detailed, more complicated brakes. Hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have uh, this part done that I need to make and kind of show you where these mods make it possible, whereas the, uh, the standard configuration there's no way uh, to do some of these breaks. Uh, again, going back and forth about whether I should just build my own uh, or buy one. You know, it's a $300 tool. Uh, it's not terribly expensive, but it's a pretty good chunk of change. But all in all, it was just easier to buy it, get it shipped out, and do the mods that I want to on it. So uh, that's kind of what made me decide to pull the trigger on it. So uh, let's get jumping into seeing what some of the, the changes are that I plan on making. So let's go. All right, so most of you are probably gonna be familiar with the Swag Off-Road Press Brakes. There are only two components really that are uh, proprietary or unique that you can't buy otherwise. Uh, and that is the pinch clamp up here that holds the fingers and the brace uh, on the bottom. Uh, you could work your way around a couple of those uh, fairly simply. Uh, it was worth just buying it to, to get it going. <clears throat> so the big difference here as you can see, this is a fixed lower uh, plate. Uh, whatever it is, that is. Like, you have a 10 inch wide piece that only a couple parts need to bend and the others need to stay straight. This is not the press that's gonna get that for you. These fingers come in handy, but only in certain applications. Even their demos that they do online, it shows press in a certain area and keep it in a certain area straight. Well, you're in effect, you know, bending the plate in areas that you don't intend to, it's its kind of silly. By the end of this, you kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, the first mod that I'm gonna jump on is uh, these posts right here. They are about seven inches long, if I'm not mistaken. And they just basically go in the top of the plate. And that's the guide. There's no stress to them really. It just kind of keeps it from uh, getting sideways. That part is more or less staying the same. Uh, the big difference is that I'm going to lengthen them out the bottom side. And as I continue on, it'll kind of make more sense why after. So I'm going to put together the basics, uh, the basic machine, that the, the way it's going to look. The odd thing right off the bat is they're going to be probably um, about 10 inches or more, 12 inches more uh, material of this uh, three quarter inch or excuse me, seven eighths round bar sticking out the bottom side. So you can kind of tell this is the original length. So what I'm gonna start with is pressing this into the hole that is the base plate, get it tacked into place, and then carry on from there. So this is basically the first step of the mod. You wanna get something that's gonna be about 18 inches per side. I don't know the exact length that I'm gonna be set with to, to start, but I can always cut the length uh, after it's welded in, after I'm done and I know that it's gonna work out for me. So I'm gonna jump on uh, getting this welded into the, to the base plate there and move on to the next step. All right, now first things first, when you get this press, uh, the instructions are pretty simple. On the, this is the bottom side, it's just sitting that way because of convenience. Uh, they would normally have you press or hammer the rod through the hole here. So it's a, it's a, tight fit since I'm putting a tube all the way through it that full seven inches uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, use a reamer and open that up a little bit so it still stays tight but I can uh, slide it through a little bit easier so that's one mod that you're gonna have to do uh, normally hammer it through I'm gonna open it up a little bit to, to make it a little bit easier on me uh, getting going All right, so everything's been opened up to a nice 
tight but manageable uh, tolerance. Uh, I don't want to bang too much on my plasma table here, so I might get them kind of just fixed in there. So it's about time to do a little bit of welding, nothing major yet, uh, but it has to do with a stop guide on the back side of the machine. So when you have it up in place, there's a rail that kind of helps support material if you need it, if it's a long piece and it's a stop guide. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done with that to improve it as well. So I'll kind of mess with that uh, as time goes on. It's not something I'm gonna need in the immediate future. But what the instructions have you do and what's provided are carriage bolts. There's a square hole cut into the plate and you just put them in and tack them, you know, whatever. It doesn't take much to hold them in place. The problem that I see with them is that uh, a damaged thread on a stud or a broken stud sticking off there is a much bigger pain in the rear than dealing with a broken bolt in a captive nut. Now you have to weld these on whichever direction you go before uh, the lower plate uh, is welded and you can't get to it any other way other than that. So um, yeah, so I'll just tack those in. I would recommend anybody doing that. Uh, the only thing that I can see is that I might have to shave down the nuts here. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind that you'll have to you know do a little test fit, maybe shave off a little bit, but just the high, high corner so that your plate doesn't uh, come in contact or rest on it. So uh, I'll move on with that. And now, now we're pretty much ready to start doing some welding. So I'm pretty much at the point now that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start building my lower die. Um, the whole purpose of doing this is to not only have the fingers above, but a lower die that allows for uh, some material uh, in odd shapes the opposite direction, really maximizing the press. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, how it's meant to operate and the idea that I can continue to go larger if I needed to for extra clearance, but this two inch by three inch uh, box is pretty much what I'm gonna set most of my, my tooling at for now. I think it's gonna give me plenty of clearance for what I need for the current project at hand, and then I've got plenty of length to go taller, say I had a, a, a odd shaped box that needs to go the opposite direction. So now the, uh, the next thing is how I want to keep these positioned and what I've done is I just made a quick run to uh, the metal supply shop and picked up some remnants of some half inch bar stock and I'm basically going to just line either side and that will keep these fixed in line and I can build my upper dies from there and in the interest of time I think what I'm going to do uh, just to get this uh, current project out. I'm gonna use some of the remnant as well. Let's see if I've got some in there. Basically the void just being enough that uh, I can do a nice tight radius uh, break in some uh, 316s plate. I should have something ready to, uh, to get under the press here pretty soon. So I'm gonna carry on.
All right, so one thing I think that's important that I haven't seen anybody uh, make mention of uh, when it comes to setting up uh, the lower uh, die here, uh, and that is it being parallel uh, across this flat surface here as it is to the bottom surface here. That way you're not starting your bend at a bad angle. You know that uh, if you put a uh, digital angle finder on there that you're starting off at as near zero as possible. So uh, if you move the plate like this, you can kind of see that you can kind of just arbitrarily place it wherever you want. Uh, so what I would recommend is uh, I've got a plate underneath here that spans both sides. I'm just gonna measure top down on both sides, make sure it's as close as possible, go ahead and tack that in, and I'll check it one other time after that. And that way I am a little bit more confident that I'm starting off with a, a flat plane to start with. So that's pretty much a wrap. Uh, I have a fair bit of welding left to do uh, to button everything up. Uh, at this point, you can pretty much get the gist of it. You know, I've got lower dies that are, are movable and put them into any position I need. And I've got the ability to grow up or two, you know, with larger stock, uh, making larger lower dies. If I had something that, you know, needed to pass through here that was even taller. So uh, a lot of uh, growth options for this thing now. Uh, this is kind of just one that I think is an important mod that anybody who's looking at these presses should probably jump on right out the gate. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna wrap up the video. And if I can get the plates cut that I needed for this specific job that uh, the, the tool required, I'll try to sneak those in on the video too at the end here and kind of show you why this was uh, so important. So that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up. Enjoy, have a good one.